Hey guys, I'm Ted and I'm here to give you another fast fact. And for this fast fact, we are going to look at the development of writing. Now, the way it appears that writing developed was that scribes, and again, the scribes were the men assigned to uh, recording the inventories of the temples in ancient Sumeria. Um, uh, these scribes, they used little tokens to indicate various animals, and they used a base 10 tally mark system to indicate the value or the, uh, the numerical value of said, uh, said good, said, said good that was um, stored uh, in, the, in the great warehouses of the Sumer uh, Sumerian temples. Now, this system was primarily used for tracking livestock and grain, and the scribes learned very quickly uh, that they can create shorthands. Uh, since their language was an agglutinative and monosyllabic, uh, they, they, could, uh, sort of, uh, they had this sort of added flexibility in their, in their duties, uh, added flexibility to, to perform their duties, I should say. Now, this allowed the Sumerians to string together more complex words by adding prefixes, suffixes, and, and others to, uh, to the brace words uh, that could be used to express mood, tense, and gender. Uh, the Sumerian scribes were also able to take their pictographs and apply them to a sound. Um, their language contained a lot of homophones and homonyms, uh, and those, of course, are words that sound the same and are written the same, but have separate meanings, or, uh, or words that sound the same but have uh, a completely different um, spelling. Now, an example of a homonym would be bear. Uh, bear can refer to both the animal or it can mean to carry or support. Uh, an example of a homophone would be new and new. One meaning recently introduced or discovered, and the other being the past tense of no. The Sumerian language had a large combination of these words. And it was, uh, it was not a large jump for the Sumerian scribes to simply use the pictures uh, to mean the sound because they were monosyllabic words. They took the concept further by using pictographs to represent an idea. Now, in this way, the pictograph were exploited to express more complex concepts. These scribes then began to devise a whole new set of pictographs that they would, that they would be able to use to express sounds or groups of sounds. A major development, uh, that, that was a major development in writing to be sure. Now, this process was intense and a number of their earlier symbols were discarded during this, uh, this um, sophistication process and, and they were discarded for practical reasons. Uh, the Sumerian scribes eventually whittled down the reservoir of words and symbols down to 750. And this was a tremendous task because they were whittling down from a couple thousand uh, symbols. And at this time, uh, they do not possess what we call true writing. They're still using pictographs to symbolize actions. Um, and they, they did this by using uh, a head and a bowl. And that was, right, uh, that, that was written or recorded to symbolize to eat. Um, and of course, a hand and a pitchfork was used to symbolize or to write to farm or, or, or any event involving farming. Now, those are very close to uh, making the leap to full-fledged writing, but still not really there. And the major drawback to their new system was that they still could not express complicated sentences. Uh, they, they, they could not uh, use subordinate clauses. They could not express tense and mood. They were advancing, but, it, but their accomplishment for, from our perspective, still very basic, still at a very basic level, though they had made tremendous gains in the area toward progressing towards true writing. And as always, hit like, subscribe, and comment. Let me know what you thought about this fast fact. I am Ted, and I will see you guys next time for another fast fact.